This is my 1998 Jeep Grand Cherokee, and I didn't change the gear oil in the transfer case for 10 years, so I did what anybody would do. I took a sample and sent it to a lab for analysis. If you don't know what a transfer case is, it's basically an additional gearbox attached to the transmission, which gives a vehicle four-wheel drive capability. This one uses Dextron 3 ATF, also known as Automatic Transmission Fluid. This Jeep has an NP249 transfer case, which is the all-time four-wheel drive version and is one of three different transfer cases that came with these Jeeps from the factory. The service manual for my Jeep recommends changing the transfer case fluid every 30,000 miles, but I mostly use it for camping and day trips out to the forest, so it just doesn't get driven much. The first time I changed the fluid was September 5th, 2013, when I replaced the viscous coupler at 173,000 miles shortly after buying the Jeep. I didn't change it again until November 13th, 2023, in preparation for a cross-country move from Oregon to Arkansas at 209,000 miles. So at the time I changed it, the fluid was 10 years and 2 months old and had been used for 36,000 miles, which is 6,000 miles more than recommended. A lot of car manufacturers suggest replacing motor oil once a year, and I kind of debunked that in a recent video where I sent in a two-year-old sample for analysis, but I've never heard of a recommendation like that for gear oil, so this should be an interesting test. To be perfectly honest, I had already packed my sample kits in the moving truck before I changed the transfer case fluid, so I went to the store and bought a glass mason jar to take the sample, making sure to hand wash and dry it thoroughly first. To be even more honest, the move was very expensive, and I couldn't afford to have the sample analyzed right away, so this jar sat in the bottom drawer of my toolbox for about six months. So if you want a U-Haul, and you want to move it from Oregon to Arkansas, and you don't even want anything else, it's going to be $6,800, not including gas. How can that be right? By the time I was ready to mail off the sample, a film had developed on the inside of the glass, so I shook it by hand until the film cleared up. Okay, I shook this really hard for a long time off camera, and I think I got rid of all the cloudiness that was stuck to the jar. Even the bottom, it's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this into the sample collection jar that they sent. I also included a note explaining the whole situation. The results arrived a few weeks later, and they're actually worse than I expected. So without further ado, let's dive into the analysis, starting with the notes from the lab. David, thanks for the notes. There's a lot of metal in this sample. If this was one of the first few oil changes for this transfer case, then some of the extra metal might be from the initial wear-in process. If so, we should find progress with each oil change until metals are closer to universal averages. Those averages show typical wear after about 40,500 miles on the oil. Metals could also show extra wear, but let's just see how trends develop, especially if all is well on your end. Insolubles are a bit high, so it was a good idea to change this oil. The 1.7 TAN shows mild acidity. I bought this Jeep with 173,000 miles on it, so I really hope the transfer case fluid has been changed a few times before I got to it, but I know this wasn't its very first fluid change, so the extra metal in this sample was likely not from the initial wear-in process. I paid extra to get the TAN result, which stands for Total Acid Number, and I'll go over what that means later in the video, but first, let's take a look at which elements the lab found in the oil. I've organized the data from Blackstone into my own spreadsheet, so it's easier to understand. Right off the bat, aluminum is almost 17 times higher than the universal average and is attributed directly to wear. Iron and copper are concerningly high as well, but lead takes the cake at 52 times the universal average, and all three of these are also attributed to wear. All the other elements found in this sample appear to be in line with what we should expect from a healthy sample, so let's move on to the oil properties. Both measurements of viscosity fall perfectly within range, and the flashpoint looks good too. 
They didn't find any water in this sample, which is a relief because the part of Oregon I'm from is a pretty moist environment, and I have driven the Jeep through some somewhat deep puddles over the years. Insolubles are higher than they should be, but not by much. It could be a lot worse. And that brings us back to the TAN. As I mentioned earlier, TAN stands for Total Acid Number. I looked all over Blackstone's website for an explanation of what the TAN should be, or how high is too high, but didn't find anything about it, so I sent them an email. I got a reply the next day with the following explanation. David, thanks for reaching out. It's hard to provide a clear-cut limit for the TAN. It's a measurement of how acidic the oil is, and the lower the TAN, the less acidic the oil. In this case, 1.7 is what I would say is quite low. I would say a high result for a transfer case is somewhere around 5.0 or so, but for some systems and oils, 5.0 might be okay. Some oils have a higher starting TAN than others, and that will influence the result as well. As long as the TAN isn't unusually high, I wouldn't be concerned about the oil becoming quote-unquote corrosive. I was hoping for a more detailed explanation than this, but once I went hunting for one online and found it, I understood why I was given this basic explanation. That topic goes beyond the scope of this video, but if you want to read all about it, I've put a link in the video description that should answer all your questions and more. Like the lab said, this is one of the first samples they've analyzed from this model of transfer case, so the universal averages should be taken with a grain of salt, but the levels of aluminum, iron, copper, and lead found in this sample are significantly higher than any sample of motor oil that I've had analyzed so far. The fact that the universal average for potassium is 10 parts per million makes me question if the lab has ever tested a sample from this transfer case before, because from what I've read at least, potassium typically comes from coolant, which would never be in contact with this transfer case. Leave a comment if you know another source of potassium that would make sense here. Nevertheless, this analysis provided some valuable information that we can look back on when I send in future samples for comparison. And don't worry, I'll definitely be changing this fluid a lot more often from now on. If you have a Jeep, Dodge, or any other vehicle running this transfer case, consider sending in a sample of your own transfer case fluid for analysis to help build the lab's database so we can get some better results down the road. I have a few other oil analysis videos now, and a whole bunch of videos showing how to repair and modify a wide range of vehicles, so check those out before you go. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe for more of the best DIY videos on the internet. And until next time, just keep throwing money at it. By the way, you can now support the channel by purchasing this awesome design available in a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and in a bunch of different colors as well. Check for a link in the description below. The uh, toast is a piece of white bread. It has essentially like a little bit of a garlic salt coating to it, and it's buttery as well but uh, that garlicky note I personally enjoy. Generally speaking, when I go to Zaxby's, I'll actually get some extra Texas toast because I find it enjoyable. It has a nice little, I think as you can see, toast to the top of it, a little bit of a, a crisp there, but uh, it tastes good, all things considered. It's a nice side. I actually prefer the Texas toast to the fries, all things considered. So uh, the Texas toast is perfectly fine for what it is. Again, nice little salty but garlicky note to it, uh, which I am rather fond of.